Now, an aid group says millions of children who were saved under a malaria prevention programme are now at risk of contracting the disease because of a lack of funding. Seasonal Malaria Chemo Prevention, or SMC, was a scheme which provided children with anti-malarial drugs during the rainy season. The charity Malaria Consortium says it's helped save 40,000 lives and prevented 6 million cases, mainly across Africa. It costs $3.40 a year per child, but the group says money is running out, leaving 34 million children at risk of being exposed to malaria. Well, let's speak now to James Tibindarana, the technical director for the Malaria Consortium. James, a very warm welcome to the programme. Lovely to have you with Thank you us. Very much, um, so, James, just tell me how you got involved with the programme and what it was designed to achieve. The programme um, stemmed from research that had shown that um, SMC, seasonal malaria chemo prevention, was very effective. And in Malaria Consortium, we were looking for the opportunity to scale it up because there were 25 million children who could benefit from the intervention and very few of those were being targeted through research. So we designed a project and submitted out an application to UNITAID, who fortunately enough selected us. And we participated in a multi-country project in seven countries with five organizations and extended SMC to cover at least on average, I would say about three to six million children between 2015, 2016. And in total, we've managed to save about 40,000 um, kids from dying. That's amazing. Uh, uh, James, ha why does it work so well, this, this process? It works so well because um, treatment is something which is um, accepted by populations. And a treatment given at the exact point just before children are likely to fall sick and prevents them from falling sick is so effective. And the research has shown that, and we have shown it at scale. And I think, I think it's credit to the researchers who managed to prove this. In addition, the drug is highly effective. It's a combination of two drugs. One is called sulfadoxin pyrimethamine, which is a combination, and amodiaquine. And they're used in areas where both drugs do not have high resistance. What would you like to see happen next? I mean, this is about funding ultimately, isn't it? How much support have you got to continue the program as it stands? Well, the project was designed as a catalytic project, i.e. to improve access, to get rid of some of the barriers, which we have managed to, and to transition to other streams of funding, like the Global Fund, like the World Bank, but importantly, to government funding. So the project comes to an end in February 2018. I think the critical thing is that the funding has to come at the right time. For example, if the funding doesn't come between now and probably January, it will be too late to be able to order the drugs in time for the rainy season that starts in July in the Sahel region. So if the money, for example, came on board in July or August, it will be too late because you need a lead time to order the medicines, to put the plans in place, and to get the medicines to the villages where they should be distributed. So I think it's critical that the funding needs to come in time for the drugs to be made available. Governments need to put in as much as they can. Other organizations like the Global Fund, like the World Bank, like the African Development Bank, the Islamic Development Bank, need to put um, the money in at the right time. So this will work, but only in some countries. Just explain why. Because it only works where malaria transmission is about four months of the, the calendar year. And in an environment where 60% of malaria occurs during those four months. And as I mentioned, the two drugs need to be efficacious, i.e. effective in that setting. And the area that has been defined by WHO is the Sahel region in sub-Saharan Africa. James, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Best you, Best of luck with your project.